Um, okay, so having all this time off, downtime, off social media, picking up these new hobbies, did you have any weird feelings about not being on mm. television in terms of like an identity crisis? I thought I would. That? I, I genuinely, like if you would have told me, I don't want to say, the, my so my last stuff was what, the finals of 2019. So I already knew that I wanted to leave during that period. So, but if you told me like maybe at the beginning of those playoffs, perhaps, or maybe mid season that, Hey, you're not going to do TV in a couple years at all. And I would, I would have been like, well, how will I, what, what, well, who will I be? Like, what does it mean? And so I, yeah, but I didn't. And That's it was, nice. I don't know. It's because if I, like, I, like for me doing the NBA at that level, like doing the fun, that was sort of a, that was a moment for me and I mm -hmm. did it. And I'm like, okay, maybe because I did that, I was very calm and I didn't miss it. I think I just didn't miss, well, there was no drama in my life. Like I went from just sort of some garbage people kind of making crap for everybody else to like no garbage people in my life at all. And that was such a nice, peaceful way to be that I, I maybe that's why I didn't miss it. Yeah. It was weird. Like, I don't know. I thought I would. I really did think I'd miss it more than I did. You have got, I mean, you've done everything in television well, pretty much. Up for late night. Isn't that funny how all of us are like, I would love my own late night show. <laughs> but no, I know. I mean, I certainly have. Oh, I felt that way when I first got into television. I was like, that's what I want to do. And then I was mm -hmm. like, okay, maybe daytime or like, I still like that still is a thing that like kind of nags at me a little bit. Um, what when you were doing your show for NBC, what was that experience like for you? Because as the, an outsider, the entertainment stuff or the or the when when you were, uh, the sports one. Oh, this. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, I, well, first I loved, it was nice to be wanted, um, you know, but like another network to come along and sort of court you in a way was like, oh, wow, this is, this feels great. And, um, and it would have been, I think it would have been a, a much more pleasant experience. I, I just think, Again, I think this happens probably more times than it doesn't. You get too many cooks in the kitchen mm -hmm. and somehow that one cook is louder than everybody else, whether it be by title or what have you. And they, they kind of just come in and crap all over what was the original vision and idea. And I think that's really, you know, they, they were like, Hey, you're going to pick your host and that. And we all, we talked about it. I knew who, and then they went with some dude that like, I, I don't think he and I could have gotten along worse. Yeah. And I was just sort of like, what? what happened here? Like, what's the deal? But it was nice. I got to live in New York. You know, I got to do Access Hollywood, which was also a hell of a learning experience. Um, I, it was my first office. I'd never have, been, you know, ESPN has cubicles, so mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how big time you are, but like having your own office and they gave me an assistant, which to oh, this day is one of my closest nice. friends. Oh yeah. I had nothing for her to do. I was <laughs> like, uh, do you want to just hang out with me and go to dinner? Like, I don't know got nothing. There's nothing in my life that needs another person to help me do, but it was good. It was nice to, and it was also nice to leave because sometimes when you leave somewhere that they, they like, Oh, maybe we, we actually, we probably do want you back. So let's do this. And it, it was good. Sure. Overall, it was a good experience. I just, I I've learned to like, well, a you don't want to live through life being a bitter asshole because nobody likes that. But yeah, more importantly, I've, more, I, I'm trying to take like the bigger sum of all these experiences. Cause sometimes I think we focus on like that one person who ruined it or did, and then it's like, no, that was actually a lot of cool things happened during that period. And I, yeah. that's what I'm trying to focus more on these days, which is not always easy. Um, let's talk a little calling cowherd here because you two were like a hell of a tandem. <laughs> like what a pair. What what was that relationship like for you uh, working so closely with Colin on Sports Nation? I mean, it was, you know, it was an ignorance is bliss for sure situation for me, because I, I tried out for that. I was one of the last ones I think to try out. And I, I remember I didn't take it uber seriously. Cause you know, at that point you're like, it's going to be a no. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to yeah. do my job, I mean, whatever. And then, and, and then I got it and I was like, okay, now what are we doing exactly? And I knew it was a show, you know, for Con Coward. I was like, all right, he's a nationally known radio guy. I was familiar with who he was, blah, blah, blah. I think the thing that I, I probably treasure the most, you know, other than just the group of people that was sort of joined together to make this thing even start was the fact that Colin uh, embraced not just me, but also just how this thing came together because it was going to be just like his show. And then I was going to just be like, you know, some sidekick, whatever. And in he, as the thing sort of turned into whatever it became on its, it evolved he never once like the ego thing never happened. He never sort of was like, well, you know, simmer down. This is, this is mine, blah, blah, blah. None of that. Um, and I think 
at that point, especially, I think people had this idea of who Colin Cowherd was. And when I would tell them, no, it's, he's actually been quite lovely and, um, understand and we had fun. And I think that was it. Like, it was just a fun show. It never felt like work. It, it was, we laughed every day and I, I, I'm good for that because especially now that I've met lots of people with large egos and I mm-hmm. know what that looks and feels like, it, it makes it even that much better when I think about it. Like he just, yeah. he went with it and, and it was fun for that. You know, when we were talking about like inside the NBA and the chemistry that was there, I feel like you and Colin did have a very special chemistry. (laughs) Do you wish that you guys were able to have continued working together longer to just like let that become that big monster? I mean, it would have been nice, but I also think, you know, well, a like, you know how this business works. Yeah. You can either do what you love for as long as possible and hopefully sometimes that just happens to also be where the most money is, but it isn't always that way. And so I got like, I get it. I was like, he wanted to live in LA. I mean, who, no, no offense, Connecticut. Nobody <laughs> wants to live in Connecticut. And so nobody I, does. No, nobody does. Nobody me, does. LA or Manhattan beach or Fairfield, Connecticut. I, Listen, know, I remember when I was coming into audition for sports nation. So this was like such, I mean, this was such a huge deal for me because as you we're getting ready to leave ESPN, leaving Sports Nation. I was in Toronto. I was leaving my job. My contract was up at the score um, and I didn't know what was next for me. So <laughs> I had gone down and I had, so I had my audition with ESPN, which I felt great about. I loved it. I had such a good time working uh, with Jamie Horowitz. He yep. was awesome. Um, loved it. And I was like, okay, I feel like maybe that happened. Like, did, did are we all high-fiving? That felt really great. <laughs> So I I go home and I'm like, got that shit in the bag. And then like, lo and behold, you're being shot out of the cannon. Yeah, (laughs) Right. Carissa comes walking up and I'm in Toronto going like, no, 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 no. Hold on. Oh, they didn't (laughs) even tell you. Oh, I hate that. I wish they just say no. It's fine. But at the time it did feel monumental that I was like, holy shit, I thought this was the thing. But anyways, uh, the point is that literally days after I went into audition um, at ESPN, I went, I got brought into WWE and, you know, history kind of writes itself from there. Exactly. But the point is Connecticut fucking sucks. Oh God. I don't miss it at all. No offense. I don't miss being iced into my own house. Like, if oh my was, God. Oh. Between like Bristol and Stamford, oh. like at least Stamford's got a lot of restaurants. They do of. have a lot. Yeah. <laughs> pa- Capital grill. Here I come. <laughs> Boom. <There you> go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could tell you every restaurant in Southington. I did. I did hit up that target a lot. So, you know, <laughs> I did have that going for me back. then. I would always pass the studios where Maury shoots and be like, how do I get in there? I yes. want to go to a taping of Maury. That man won the television race. He did. Like he yes, won he how did. you do tell he and Jerry Springer won it. Yeah. Won it. They did. God bless him. And Steve Wilkos ain't doing too bad either. I mean, if you would have told me <laughs> that, that was going to happen, I would have never good for him. God, I love television Steve Wilkos. like who yeah. knew, but he's kind of serious too. A star like, I was born. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. Uh, just a side little tangent. Colin, you're a hell of a guy. Yep. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He could have been a dick. But he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs>